Hello, I'm Steve Shaw, National Coordinator of Football Officials and Secretary of Rules Editor for the NCAA. And today we're continuing our series of media videos for the 2022 season. And we're going to be focused on game action from week seven. Now, it was another compelling week of college football, some amazing finishes, and really just good football all around. I want to take a moment to update you on our kickoff statistics for the season. We're averaging 10.7 kickoffs per game, and of those kickoffs, 34% of those are being returned. Now, we've had 28 returned all the way for touchdowns, and we've had some very exciting onside kick plays that have actually changed games. So the kickoff play is a great play for our game. Now, a few years back, there were many people that thought we would be eliminating this play, but the rules committee has worked very hard to make this a safer play for our game. We've implemented things like the touchback going out to the 25 yard line, limiting the run up of the kicking team. We've introduced the fair catch option where a player can make a fair catch and get the ball out at the 25 yard line. We've eliminated double team blocks and blindside blocks on the kickoffs. So we've made a lot of changes to make the play safer. And our data for the last two years show that the injury rate on a kickoff play is actually below that of a regular scrimmage play. So we're very pleased with that, but we'll continue to monitor it. And if that injury rate begins to creep back up, we've got some other ideas coming from our coaches and special team coaches on how to continue to work to make the play safe. We want to keep it in our game. It's a great play. With that, let's get on into our video. Our first play this week, we're going to review our fumble rule. Now, the offense has fourth and three at the 35-yard line going in. We're going to see the quarterback fakes a handoff. He pulls the ball. He advances for about a yard. He's hit, loses control of the ball, and the center, number 65, scoops the ball up and takes off and rumbles down to about the 10-yard line before he's tackled. Now, we know that when we have a fumble, it can be caught or recovered by any inbounds player and advance. But there's an exception to this rule, and if we have a fumble on fourth down and the ball is caught or recovered by an offensive player other than the fumbler, the ball is dead. And if it's in advance of the fumble, the ball goes back to the spot of the fumble. And if it's recovered behind the spot of the fumble, the ball remains at that spot. And this fourth down fumble rule is also in play on any try down. So the ball will be returned to the spot of the fumble on this play, which is short of the line to gain, so the defense takes over. While we're talking fumbles, play two, we see the offense faces third and nine with the line to gain at the 45 yard line going in. Now the quarterback drops back, he scrambles, and he's gonna tuck the ball and run. As he approaches the line to gain, he sticks the ball out and clearly gets it beyond the line to gain. But defender number 25 comes over and makes the play. And as we take a closer look, we see that number 25, he hits the quarterback's arm and the ball is out of the quarterback's hands before the quarterback touches out of bounds. This is a fumble and the ball goes backward and out of bounds. By rule, if the offense fumbles a ball out of bounds, if the ball goes forward and out of bounds, it's returned to the spot of the fumble. But if it goes backward and out of bounds, as it did here, the ball belongs to the fumbling team where the ball crosses out of bounds. So even though the quarterback had the ball beyond the line to gain, the fumble is backward and the ball is spotted back to where the ball crossed out of bounds and that's short of the line to gain. Play three, the offense is in the red zone. The quarterback takes the snap, rolls to the right, stops, and then throws back across the field to big number 71 who makes the catch and then drives for the goal line. Now he's ruled down just inside the one and as we go back and take a look at the pass, the quarterback releases the ball at the 11, and number 71 makes the catch back at the 15. So the pass is clearly backward. Now, by rule, eligible receivers for the offense are all backs and linemen on the end of their scrimmage line not wearing 50 to 79. These players are eligible to catch a forward pass, but any player can catch or recover a backward pass. So number 71 is eligible to touch and catch this ball here, and this is a legal play. Now, players numbered 50 to 79 can also catch a legal forward pass anytime after that pass 
has touched a player of the defense. So there are very few times you get to see an interior lineman numbered 50 to 79 touch or carry the ball, and it makes for an exciting play. Play four, the quarterback takes a quick drop and throws out into the flat to number 12, who makes the catch and then turns upfield. Now, number 12 stiff arms defender number 15, breaks away for a touchdown, but the back judge is going to put a marker down for an offensive face mask on the play. Now, no player can continuously contact an opponent's face mask, but the runner is exempted from that rule. The runner is not exempted if he grasps and then twists and turns or pulls the face mask of an opponent. Initially, the runner just puts his hand on the face mask, and that's okay, but then he gets that hand in and grasps and twists and turns the opponent's face mask. So this is a correct call for a face mask foul. If the runner just left an open hand on the opponent's face mask and pushed without grasping, twisting, or turning, it would not be a foul. Play five, we're late in the game, and the offense is snapping from the 10-yard line. They fake the reverse, and then the runner's going to pass downfield to number 19, who catches the ball and is ruled out of bounds by the field judge at the one-yard line. Now, inside our replay rule, if a ball carrier is ruled out of bounds by the field officials, then these type plays are not reviewable unless the ball carrier clearly did not step out of bounds and they crossed the goal line in the immediate continuing action following the out of bounds ruling. Then replay can come in and award a score. And as we see from the replays, the ball carrier stayed in bounds, never stepped out of bounds, and this was a good job by replay to come in, overturn this call on the field, and rule a touchdown. But if this type action occurred back up in the field of play, then the out of bounds ruling is not reviewable by replay. Our last play this week is gonna illustrate an in-season rules interpretation that we have to make from time to time. As coaches continue to innovate, we sometimes see new things that must be ruled upon. Now what we're gonna see here is the slot receiver from the bottom of the formation. He's headed back toward the quarterback for the jet sweep. And the quarterback's gonna release the ball, but it's a fake jet sweep. And the receiver doesn't catch the ball, the quarterback catches his own pass. Now the reason many teams make this short flip of the ball is that if the receiver muffs the ball and it hits the ground, it's not a fumble, but it's an incomplete pass and the play is dead. Even statisticians rule this as a pass. So all is okay here, even if the quarterback catches the ball. The quarterback's an eligible receiver, and it's legal for them to catch their own pass. The new interpretation here is that this quick flip is going to always be ruled a forward pass unless it is very clear and obvious that it is a backward pass. Therefore, if there's a muff, the ball hits the ground, it's gonna be ruled an incomplete pass. But one other aspect that we all have to be aware of is that the offense can only make one forward pass during a scrimmage down. So a second pass by the quarterback in this situation would be ruled an illegal forward pass. Now this is one of the things that makes our game great as the continuous innovation by our coaches continue to keep us on our toes. Well, that's it for our plays this week and we appreciate your time invested in this video. And hopefully each week you can take away something new about the rules of the game. We look forward to another exciting week of football. Best of luck to all and stay safe and healthy.